Hi, I'm Eileen Roach from Designs and Machine Embroidery, and I'm happy to be here today to talk to you about mimicking that look of hand embroidery, but with today's embroidery machines. It's phenomenal what we can do with our embroidery machines. In addition to that, I mean, I'm going to talk about the thread, the stabilizer, the needle that you'll use, and, uh, you know, all the little tips. And then I'll show you how I transform some of those chunky stitches into an adorable clutch and uh, make a little purse. We have a guest that's going to join us in just a couple minutes, Sue Overy from Sue Overy Designs. She's in Florida. You know, I've known Sue for over 18 years, I guess. We met, met a long time ago at Baby Lock Tech. And at that time, she was all about in the hoop designs and she was doing a little serger work. So um, I've had a you know, great longstanding relationship with her. She would contribute to the magazine on a regular basis. And eventually she began uh, her own column in the magazine called, Does This Notion Really Work? And if you followed that, maybe you knew, already knew about that column from her videos that she did uh, does on YouTube. So if you would just say hello, let me know where you are joining us from. Uh, I'll bring in Sue so she can um, tell us where she's, uh, what she's up to lately. Hi, Sonia from Oklahoma and Kathy Booter from Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, it's just just great to have everybody here. Hi, Linda Jean. We have seen so many cool um, dime doors around the web. And oh, I'm going to share a couple, just a couple slides with you of recent ones. And of course, I am working on uh, Junes. And it, it's going to, I think, be apropos for just about all of us. So I'm really excited. The colors are fun and um, you know, a little summery feel, a little seasonal feel. Hi, Cindy from Portland, Texas. Nice, nice to have you here. And uh, Joey Girl from California, thanks for joining us. Marsha from Jacksonville, it's great to have everybody here. So, and here's my friend Deborah Jones. Hi, Deborah, thanks for joining us. Oh, she's known Sue Overy for a long time, also. I know that. And it's great to have Ayn McCarthy here. Oh, hi, Dory. Um, you, you, you're from Naples. I know at Flash Sewing is your home dealer. And you met Sue at Flash a few years ago. Oh, I bet that was a lot of fun. So let me um, share my screen so that you can uh, see the new dime doors that are out. And then we will meet Sue. How about that? So let me pull off that banner so that you can see exactly what we're doing. And that banner also. <laughs> okay. Okay, so Sue, as I promised, she's coming up really soon, just in a couple moments. But first, let's take a look at the dime doors that are out on the web. So here we have Louise Gagnon, and she did a really bright yellow ambulance. I love that. Boy, wouldn't that catch your eye if that was racing down the street? And Peggy Ayea, at, um, she added the word May into her foreground. I love that. She also did all the letters, heroes work here, in one color. Smart girl. I know how many thread changes there were involved in those multicolored designs. And then here we have um, Vicki Fisher. She did a very traditional door just like mine. I love that. I think it looks really good. But Chris Yost, she went a whole different um, a venue and she transformed her hospital into her fabric and craft store. Why not? Right. Her sign says curbside pickup. She added a little sewing machine and the word delivery to her delivery truck and fabrics and crafts to the banner above. Oh, I love that. Really very creative. Chris, Patty Dunnington, she uh, went the floral route instead of a hospital. She added the words Patty's flowers and she's got a floral delivery truck and flowers are us. That's great. And I love those big, bold uh, orange and yellow flowers that she put in the foreground. Very nice. And Alicia uh, Gentry, she went a completely different way. I kind of read a little bit about this, that she um, just, you know, used the shell of the uh, door to transform this into her own barnyard. And so I think she learned an awful lot of digitizing skills during that process. And, it does, and, I, and I know that she learned it takes quite a while to digitize a project like that, but well worth it, well worth it for sure. So 
Here's a photo of Sue and I at Quilt Market several years ago. Oh my gosh, we had so much fun when I popped into her booth and she always have such always has such a bright colorful booth and I just, you know, had to grab a snapshot of the two of us. So, here we have um, a, a look at her YouTube channel and I'm going to let her tell you a little bit more about that, but she has almost 70 videos on this channel and this is her does that notion really work? which is, you know, a great um, review of different notions that we all love. So let's see, we, um, here is something that she is going to share with you. She's got a special code uh, for her point tone turner. So let's go ahead and bring her in. Hi, Sue, thanks for joining me. And we don't have any sound with Sue just yet. Let's, let's okay. get that turned on. There we go. Hi, Sue. <laughs> hey, how are little you? Little dancing and I'm um, great. Always a little dancing involved, I'll, right? We'll, I will entertain well if you can't hear me. <laughs> That's right. Well, it's just so great to have you here. It really oh, is. Thanks so much, Eileen. I really appreciate it. It's good yeah. to... It's Good to see friends, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. You know, I, I don't know if you remember Dory from uh, Flash Sewing down in Naples. She's a sweetheart. If you taught there, I'll bet you could uh, envision who she was because uh, I know every time I meet her, every time I'm in a class with her, she's quite memorable. Lots of fun. Nice. Yeah. So, so you've been so busy. What are you up to right now? Well, right now I'm actually, and I've shared with my audience, I've been up to a few top secret projects that are yet to be revealed okay. uh, in October. But other than that, I've, uh, I've started, I'm going to be starting a new YouTube channel um, oh. called Suki Sews. Okay. And so because of that, I really wanted, I really want this new channel to be focused on sewing, beginning sewing. So um, we just had a big celebration on my current YouTube channel. We reached 10,000 subscribers and I made wow. a bunch of, yeah, a bunch of beginner sewing yeah. projects. And, and, and we so have sound effects for that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh That's a huge milestone, 10,000. Congratulations. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. You're so welcome. there's 10, um, 10 basic sewing projects and I've got some of them here. I mean, they're okay. really... They're really good basic yes. projects, but they all teach different lessons. And there's there's like a little tissue case that teaches mm -hmm. French seams and then like how to create faux piping. And then there's the most popular was this uh, this hand sanitizer case nice. that is just a couple of pieces of fabric. Okay. And then a little bit of elastic. So there's like I said, there's 10 of these projects that I've been work I was working on that for a while. And that's that's what I've been focusing on. And I've I've done some a little bit of filming, but I've just been consumed with this one project. So mm. I'll be I'm almost done with it. <laughs> that's great. I know that uh, <clears throat> excuse me, incorporating a little bit of elastic into a beginner's project is a good idea because I think elastic is scary for beginners, but if they just begin to just experiment a little bit with it, it opens up, you know, skirts and leggings and, yeah. you know, slip on pants, all kinds of stuff yeah, that are so things. really easy to make. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's really great. Now you do currently have a favorite brand of machines and that's Bernina, correct? Yes. Yeah. About two years ago, I started working with the Bernina brand and um, really, I love the company. I love the, the machine. Um, I've got uh, two Bernina. I have my Bernina embroidering and sewing. And then I also have my serger in the back there, too. Oh. And um, when I give you a tour of the room, you'll see the new machine for, for Suki Sews because it's going to be really more geared toward beginner sewers. Sure. Um, you know, we all love our embroidery machines. We love them. Yeah. We couldn't live without them. Yeah. But right. the beginner sewer, I thought I, I might want to use something that's not so intimidating, maybe not so, right. you know, it, do, it it does a lot. But for, mm -hmm. for a beginner, it might be a little overwhelming. So I've got a, a good basic sewing machine I'll be using for that. Right. So, they basically yeah. need a straight stitch, a <laughs> zigzag, and maybe a buttonhole. But really, exactly. those three things, that's about it, just to get them started. You don't want to overwhelm them. 
Yes. And then they can get into embroidery and then enjoy mm -hmm. our world that we're in now. <laughs> yes. So are you focusing this on a certain age group or is it just everybody who's anyone who's a beginner? Anyone who's a beginner and Good. boys and girls and Great. all over the world beginning yes. and a place where, you know, I'll tell you between between all of us that are watching, I think yeah. there's a lot of great YouTube channels out there that mm -hmm. have lots of uh, subscribers, but I'll mm -hmm. watch them for sewing and I'm like, that's not how you do it. Wait, 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 they're teaching you wrong. So I kind of think that uh, going back to the basics with the real basics, like what is a seam allowance and yeah. why do we use thread and what kind, like some, so that I think that's gonna be really needed and welcomed. Yeah. And, a little background information for them on the technical aspects of sewing really sets them up for success. I think that's a great way to approach it. So you'll do well with that. I'm excited. I'm excited. So yeah. we're, gonna, we're gonna be working on that quite a bit. And then I've got some new in the hoop things coming up in the next month or so. Um, I just, with all the shutdown, I, yes. I've been so busy. I don't feel like I had a chance to really <laughs> like, you know, uh, get into more creative things, but you know, just it's it's uh it's gonna be fun. And I've got the next two months plotted out for some new in the hoop things and machine embroidery. Great. Great. And oh and working with oh. some new tools. Oh fun. I got, I got this in the mail. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> I was showing my audience that last night. So I've got oh, some, some new notions that I get to play with. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And so what do you do on Wednesday nights? I understand that's a pretty big night for you. Yeah, we started back in March, um, February, February or March sometime. And I have, uh, I've been doing this called So Talk with Sue. And it's every Wednesday at 7pm. And it's a semi live. Uh, because our internet isn't so great here. I've been nervous yes. about doing a true live. However, okay. Uh, last night we did a test and it went pretty good. So good, we might, good. We might give it another try. But we right. talk about a new notion. We talk about sewing tips, what's new, what's going on mm -hmm. uh, behind the scenes. So yeah, it's been fun to, and I, I love seeing like the same names pop up. It's kind of like right. a weekly sewing get together. I've had a, I've, I've had a good time with it. Absolutely. You know, you do kind of, you get a, a group of people that just enjoy gathering together online and, you know, relationships are established. It's a great thing. Like here, I see a lot of these names and they, they're all familiar to me now. I love that. Like for instance, yep. Carol Lombard, yep. she just wrote in beautiful lace earrings, Eileen. And so I want to say thank you, Carol. I do like these. They're my feather earrings, but you know what I really love about them? Because they're thread, they are lightweight. I feel like I don't have any kind of jewelry on at all, which is a bonus to me. I'm not big on heavy jewelry. So yeah. anyway, yeah. I thought I'd share that. Yeah, yeah we have a lot of, thank you, thank you. So let's see, um, here we have Leah Geary. She says, uh, this would be great, Suki sews for her eight-year-old grandson. Since lockdown, his mom has been showing him how to cook, bake, and iron, and sewing would be a great new skill. Yeah. Would also help teach math in disguise, just like he's learning everything else. Yeah. Which, yep, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, so, yeah. Do you know, it's, it's funny that you say that, and uh, to the eight-year-old mm -hmm. son, too. My daughter, she was just learning fractions this past year in fifth grade, and she's the only one who understood what a yard was and what fractions uh -huh. were, <laughs> you know, courtesy of the sewing world. But How about that? That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So, so Linda Davis wants to know, what is your YouTube channel? So I have Suoveri. You can actually go to Suoveri TV, and that'll bring you right to my YouTube channel. The new okay. one is Suki Sews. It's S-O-O-K-I-E-S-E-W-S -E -E TV. Suki Sews TV. Right. But if they go, let me see. I think I have some banners over here. Um, if they go to your website, which is suoverydesigns.com, all of the links are there. All the information is there, correct? Yep. yep. That's yeah. the easiest. So, there and, yeah. And That's how them. we find Sue. Just suoverry.com yeah. and she will show up. Yeah. Yep. We do and have a happy, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, I was just going to say Suki is a nickname that my boyfriend gave me. And uh, so that's, that's where Suki comes from. And it's, it's, it, 
I go into it in another video about, but it, but that's where it actually came from. So that's my. It's name. a fun name. It's a fun oh. name to say, Suki. Absolutely. I know. And yep. now, like our little yep. circle of friends, everybody calls me Suki, and it's it's kind of, uh -huh. you know, it's kind of cool. Like <laughs> that's great. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> And then let's see, Misha, um, she said her 11 year old stepdaughter is learning and dream, I guess learning to sew and dreams of designing wedding dresses. So this would be perfect for her. Wow. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, do you know, yeah. tell, tell your granddaughter that I have made a career of this. I have been in the sewing industry for my entire career and I started making uh, costumes at Bush Gardens right out of college. Oh. And I did that for a long time. So I've made a career out of this. And Wow. It's wow. It's possible. I have memories of Bush Gardens, but they don't have anything to do with sewing. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a great place to visit for sure. Um, and really, you know, just a beautiful park, right? Absolutely. So BJ Johnson says, oh, Suki is so cute. She really likes that. So that's yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So you have, um, you want to give us a tour of your sewing room? Yeah, sure. I, I will okay. tell you that. So, um, I'm gonna have to unplug the phone and flip it around, but I'm actually in the dining room of our apartment. Okay. And okay. I was telling you the other day that I really like where I sit because I can see like my boyfriend and the kids, you know, like I can see everybody hanging out if I'm like sewing over here. So it's really, I like that as opposed to being, you know, in a room, which has how it's been in the past. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and try not to get you all too dizzy. Okay. okay. All right. So let me, I'm not sure. Is there a way to flip this around? I'm just going to flip it around this way and kind of manually. Get... Okay. okay. I there we go. Out. Okay. Yay. Here we go. Okay. So here is my, the dining room slash sewing room. And yep. over here to the left is the kitchen. And down this way is where the bedrooms are. And I'm really pleased with how much space I had here because I've never had so much space to go back and forth. <laughs> and um, we we had fun decorating this. We found all kinds of just fun, like this old sewing machine. And this is a picture a friend of mine, Chris, gave me. And um, just little knickknack things, you know, like this little jewelry box and just some fun little things around around the space. But everything's functional. I've got all my sprays and some fabric here. And then right over here, I've got my window looking out. I've got my a small pressing area. But if you notice, this is my camera and my tripod. And I'll I'll give you the real special tour here. This is the duct tape that holds the tripod. <laughs> holds it in place. We're gonna find a new solution for that. But this is where I do all of my overhead shots. And then this is my my Bernina 790 plus. And then really nobody has actually seen this. So I'll give you all a real sneak peek. This is actually gonna be the set for Suki Sews. Oh, it's, that's beautiful. It's totally different. If you look at that, okay, now close your eyes. Compared to this, it's got yeah. a different feel. Yes. So I'll go back over here and over here is the new machine I'll be using. It's called the Burnett V37 and it's a really good price point. It's anywhere you can find them at around $450 to $500 somewhere in there. So it's a really good price point. And then there's my cutting table with all of my, all of my rolls of like, you know, all my stabilizers and stuff are in these drawers. And all my rulers, well, some of my rulers, some of my rulers yeah. are hidden underneath there too. And then this little mannequin, I've had this mannequin for, I don't know, probably about six or seven years. And I went to a store and she had this on display and I asked her how much it was. And, and, um, I, I can't remember, she had it on sale, but ever since then, it's just like, it's been part of my studio. And I, it's like a, it's an eighth of a size of a standard, uh, dr dress form. And then my scissors here are from the, at, during Halloween, they were at the Halloween store, you know, and they were like yeah. $20. And then we just painted them bronze to match. Oh, they're great. Just beautiful. Fun. Yeah. And then Joey, he went ahead and hung them up for me. Nice. And we just had fun decorating this. And yeah. The last thing I'll show, I will show you is actually where I store my thread. Wow. So this is all my thread organized and it's all in color coordinating and the top is all sewing and embroidery and the bottom is all my serger 
th uh, serger threads. Wow. So, it's a great solution. And it's so handy. It's right there next to you. That's cool. Yeah. And then yeah. the only other thing that you can't you can't see is um, in my in my my bedroom. I've taken over the closet. <laughs> so, but I you know it's got tubs and drawers, and then I actually have an old cabinet like from 15 years ago. This cabinet I bought, uh, one of the old koala cabinets, and it's filled with fabric. So that's that's the part that nobody gets to see. <laughs> right. That's awesome though. You know, Sue, I have to tell you many, several, well, yeah, long time ago yeah. when the kids <laughs> left for college and I was home alone, single, um, I moved the living room furniture out of the living room and I moved my sewing room down into the living room. I have a two story home. It was the most productive time of my life. I mean, it was just, I was prolific. I, I wrote three books and I can't, countless products were developed. It was, it was delightful. So good yeah. for you. You're on to good things doing that. So yeah. we do have a question from Carol Lombard. She wants to know, does the Burnett use those large bobbins? It does not. It uses the class A normal. Right. Uses the class A, which would be yeah. a more u universal, you know, position yeah. for a beginner for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm looking, and, and you know, it's really funny is I had a chance to stitch on it, but I, I have I've kept it in the box because part of the series will be to take it out of the box and yeah. you know, talk about that. But but you know, good question. No, it's got the regular, and it is a uh, it's a top drop in bobbin too. Whereas yeah. most of the Berninas are front loading bobbins. Yes, but this one is a, a top drop in bobbin. Which is very user friendly. I think that's great for beginners yeah. for sure. That's yeah. great. So Judy Warren, she's our friend from uh, Hawaii. She did say she loves the duct tape. Yeah, the duct tape. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's yeah. doing its job right now. We've Absolutely. Got, when, Absolutely. Uh, when I do my filming, we've, we've worked on like there's wall mounts, there's overhead mounts, there's things that can come from the ceiling. There's lots of things, but I, once I'm done with this deadline, I'm yes, gonna yes. Have some it's fun. all about deadlines. I yeah. know it sure is. Well, Sally Carez, she she says she lives alone and she just got through moving. She said moving my bedroom to one of the guest bedrooms and her sewing to the master bedroom, and she loves that new space. So that's awesome. Nice. Yeah, yeah, things to look forward to, right? Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> everything's a trade-off <laughs> for sure. Uh, and these are big projects that people are doing right now because of COVID. Many of us are home and reorganizing, clearing out and painting yeah. and all kinds of fun things. So for sure. Yeah. yeah. So you and I also share, besides I love a thread, we have a shared passion for tools, right? Like I love to invent tools and I, yes. you know, I, I buy all kinds of tools just because I think they're really <laughs> cool. But yeah. so you recently delved into that area and I was so impressed with it. So show us your turner, would you please? Oh, yes, I will. This, okay. So this is actually based off of a notion that was designed in the 70s. And the notion, it was, it was a point turner. And I learned about it from Nancy, from Sewing with Nancy, probably uh, when I was in high school. And I immediately ordered one. I had mm -hmm. one. And then they stopped making them about 10 years ago. So if anybody had one that was silver that looked like, looked like this, they no longer made them. So about two and a half years or so ago, I contacted the Fomori Cutlery guys, and we started to redesign it. And it's been really great. So this I'm not even going to compare it to the other one because it's it, this is definitely an improvement. Um, but it's got a nice large space. It's got nice soft handles. And then the center is a little set screw, which means that you can adjust the tension of it. And the, the big, I would say, I guess I will compare it, but the big improvement is that you can see on, on this side right here, there's actually a point. And then on this side, there's actually a little groove, meaning that this will lock oh. into place. So there, Brilliant. Was, there, there was a lot of really great improvements and we made it a real pretty teal color just for fun. And, sure. uh, but the real idea of this is that it turns things right sides out and you would just slide, like we have a tube here, it's right side out right now. And then once you get to the very end, we just close the point and the little groove part onto itself. And then you just kind of do that little roly poly with your fingers to get it started. And then once you get it started, well, I'm going to pull it down here. Once you get it started, 
you can pull it to the other side, turning your tube right side out. And then once you have this part exposed, and I'll set this down, now you have this right here is the right, the right side out, and then you just drag it out. So that is, that's the original idea of it. And then the whole for me though, is like we do in the hoop projects, right? Like even the little coin purse, you know, anything that's like a small thing that needs to be turned right side out that you wouldn't traditionally be able to use with like the long turning tubes, you're able to turn that right side out too. So it's called the easy point and turner. And they've been out officially for a year, and but it has been a really great, a popular product, and so it's been hard to keep in stock. So, and then of course, thanks to COVID and <laughs> factories being shut down and everything, uh, it's it was out of stock for a while. But they're back in stock, and, um, <laughs> and we do have a coupon code if you want to go buy them, and you can save uh, an extra twenty percent off right now. So, right, that's the easy point and Turner, and it has been. A fantastic tool. Yep, you can use Suoberry 0220 and it'll give you 20% off. So if you just go to suoverydesigns.com and you know just look for that easy point turner and click on it, it'll take you to the ordering page. Yeah. But we do have, uh, before we let you go, uh, we do have some other comments that I want to share with you. So okay. I hope everybody gets that code suoverry0220. And yeah. then, um, Let's see. Uh, Judy War Warner Warren says that she, she loved that easy point turner. And um, let's see. And then Laura, she, she just, she said she's a widow of one year and we're sorry for your loss, Laura, but she's moving her sewing room upstairs out of the basement. So good for you. You are going to love that. Um, yeah. You know, one less flight of stairs, probably more light. Good for you. Uh, that's yeah. a great um, change in your life. Oh, Let's nice. see. And, and then Retha Ranke, during the pandemic, she moved her sewing upstairs, but she's going to do a small remodel and move it back down to the basement. So that sounds like that's all positive, right? One way or another, whatever way um, she's doing that. And then Marsha Freeman, she says that she loves seeing notions demonstrated. So, you know, Marsha, you would really love Sue Avery's channel where uh, she talks on a YouTube where she talks about, does this notion really work? She gives you a really thorough review of over almost 70 notions, right? Different notions. Yeah. And you know, the difference between like, does this notion really work? And that's a series that I, I used to do it once a week and now I'm pulling back to doing it once a month. But the one that's, does this notion oh. really work is really in depth. We go into depth on it. Yeah. Oh, hi, Marie. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's Marie. I know yeah. she's fun. <laughs> Uh, yeah, see her. Um, love to have her join us. She has a different life now, so I'm always really flattered when she jumps on here. Aww. And uh, Judy, Hicks, Judy Hicks says she recently got it and it's been so useful and helpful. I can imagine that it would be. Uh, let's see. Anybody else I need to get in here before we let you go? Um, I think that's pretty much all the all the comments right now. But Arnell, welcome from Salem. Um, it's always good to have Arnell here. So. Uh, Shirley Horn, she's lucky she has a large room above her husband's airplane hangar for her sewing and craft studio. Well, yeah, you do sound like a lucky woman, Shirley. That's <laughs> awesome. Good for you. That's Good great. for you. Yeah, and Patricia Barber, she loves watching you. Aww. And, oh, wow, lots of comments now. Uh, let's see, Carolyn, she says we stopped renting out our in-law apartment, in in -law apartment and moved her sewing and embroidery room to a 12 by 14 kitchen suite. That's yeah. really nice. Yeah. That's, That's great. good. Well, yep. when you have, I'll mm -hmm. tell you, I learned this a long time ago. Um, like you said, Eileen, we've known each other a very long time. And just before I met you, I started working as a shop manager at a local uh, sewing store. And I remember oh. my, my boss at the time, and she said, if you have your machine out, you will use it. But if you have to physically yep. go down underneath and pick it up and put it on a table, the chances of you using it are just, it's, and it was so true because I always, I've always had my machine out since I was six years old, I've been sewing and yeah. I always had a place, whether it was in my brother's closet or, if right. it was, you know, on the kitchen table, I've, I've always just yeah. kept it out. So when we have, you know, most of us are at the point in our lives where we are, you know, have that privilege of having a place for it and it, it, you use it. It's just, it's nice Absolutely. to have it with you. So congratulations Absolutely. to all those ladies for having some new sewing yeah. spaces. How exciting. Yeah. 
two points about that. First off, Nancy Zeman, you know, um, you you learned to sew watching her, and so did I for sure. But she, you know, of course, wrote several books on 10, 20, 30 minutes to sew, embroider, quilt, whatever. And that was so true. If your equipment is out, you can grab 10, 20, 30 minutes and get so much accomplished in a week by doing that. But my very first sewing space was literally in my kitchen. And I took the refrigerator out of that, you know how many kitchens have a built in like cubby yes. for the refrigerator? I yeah. took it out and I had a counter built and my sewing machine. <laughs> it was three inch feet wide, but you know what? It was brilliant. It was great. I got That's so much. Perfect. Stuff. Oh, yeah. Dedication, right? Yeah. yeah. And oh, here we have to end on this note because Jane Labrador, this is perfect. She says her yes. sewing room is her happy place for sure. Definitely. And I know it is mine, nice especially to during this pandemic. You know, it brings me most certainly a lot of solace to, um, you know, do what we love, right? Do what you love. Yeah. Do what you for love, sure. yeah. For sure. Okay, so I hope everybody takes advantage of that special offer that Sue's offering to you on that Easy Point Turner, which is so yeah. cool. I, and, um, um, I think it's worth mentioning too, Eileen, that that coupon code, I forgot to mention it, that's actually a, a, an across the board discount on Fomore cutlery. So if they oh. need a pair of scissors or thread snips or, even if you don't buy the Easy Point and Turner, head over there. The link, yeah. it'll, it's a pretty clear link. But if anybody needs help, they can they can contact me. But it's 20% yeah. across the board. It's That's very you know. generous. Very generous. And, you know, Sue, you and I, we throw that name Fomori Cutlery, Cutlery around like it's, you know, Kleenex. Yeah, but many true. people may not really know that name. But if they go to quilt shows and they see this, very enthusiastic man in a black apron behind a whole line of <laughs> little plastic back baskets filled with silver tools. Yes. That's Fomore Cutlery. And they yes. have every um they have every um thing that you can imagine. Somebody wants us to repeat that um code. So there we go. The code yeah. is Sue Overy 0220. Just go to her page so you can jump over to Fomore. It, the links all work. They're really easy to navigate instead of me trying to spell Fomore and you trying to write it yeah. down. <laughs> if, you, if they click on that picture right there, it'll link them to where buy now. And But if they have problems, yeah. they can reach out to me and I'm happy to help. Awesome. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Okay, so let's see if we can get the, the two of us back up here. Okay, so thank you, Sue. It was really great having you here. Um, I know we talked about thread and how you, you know, some ladies yes. say they have thread envy. So I'm hoping to show them some more thread that they have to get because uh, this I is know. one of my favorites. I'm going to have yeah. to get some of that thread. That that stuff looks great. amazing. All right, well, thank you yeah. so much for having me on here. Yeah. And, and mwah, virtual hugs. And I, I hope I get yeah. to see you in October. Crossing fingers. <laughs> Crossing fingers. That's right. Okay. Take care, Sue. Thanks for Thanks. joining me. You too. Right. Bye-bye, everybody. Isn't she great? Oh, she's so great. Just love spending some time with Sue. So uh, we talked about... Uh, Oh, Lindy Goodall, thank you for spelling for Maury. I do know how to spell it, just so it might be easier to just let them go through uh, her, um, her website. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, heavy thread and how I love to duplicate that hand look, but do it in my hoop. So we have a sampling of a polyester thread that has a matte finish, and yet it's polyester. So you're going to have the strength that we always rely on uh, in our regular embroidery thread, but it's going to give us a totally different look. So here is a collection of embroidery designs that make these three in the hoop clutches. Now, of course, there's a little sewing involved, but it's fun, right? That's what we like to do. So as you can see, these stitches are long stitches. There's not a lot of color variation because we don't really need highlights and shading. It's just strong, chunky stitches, as I like to say. Here's a close-up look. And then I think we will move over. We have a great special offer, and I'll, um, we'll come back to that slide. But I want to move over to the live cam so you can get a better look at that. And I'll just slide over there myself. So here's my three samples. You can see this is what we call a whip stat satin. And it's really heavy. It kind of looks like a bean stitch, but it's not. But it, the digitizing has been created so that it can accommodate this 15 weight thread. 
And then we also have a coordinating 40 weight thread in the same colorways. So here are, here's a look at the floral clutch. So we have a combination of the 15 weight and then the 40 in some of the lighter stitches. And here's a kind of a Southwest look. I like this. This is uh, really quite a lot of fun. It's very bold stitching. You're going to get a lot of impact from these, these designs and they stitch in literally, um, this design, this whole design stitches in 17 minutes, which I, I think is pretty quick. And I do suggest that you slow down your machine because, um, you know, it's a chunky thread. So you, I slowed mine down to 500 stitches per minute, and that's still stitched in 17 minutes, which is pretty cool. It comes, this collection today comes with this sampling of thread. There is a half 40 weight and half 15 weight, so you can mix and match. I use that thread to create this sample here so you could see the process. Also, along with the embroidery designs, the collection itself, you also get five of Schmetz top stitch needles. And these are appropriate for an embroidery machine, but they have that extra large eye so you can accommodate that heavy thread. So the first thing you're going to do is um, just add a layer of sew and fuse to the wrong side of your cotton quilting fabric. And sew and fuse is a trico knit interfacing, and it just adds a little bit more body to that lightweight batik fabric. And then my batting, and I like the batting because it adds body to the clutch. And then, of course, I use just a tearaway stabilizer. This is our piece and stitch tearaway wash away. But look at those beautiful. Um, Stitches, aren't they gorgeous? Big, chunky stitches that just fill the hoop really rapidly. And I only use three colors. You can see the original used several more colors, but I just, I love that blue, that bright blue and that hot pink. I thought that was super fun. So once you have the front of the bag stitched, then you can stitch the back. Now you could most certainly decorate this part of the bag, the, the back side of the bag, but in our samples, we opted to just leave the back plain and you can do the same. And so once you take it out of the hoop, then trim all the way around. And this outer line is your cut line and the inside line is actually your sewing line. So that's where you will sew the bag together. So let's take a look at how some of that is done. First, most certainly, it comes with color sequences for each of the three purses. And it comes with you know eight pages of full color instructions that you print out at home or just read on your computer so that you can uh, follow along with the directions on how to create that clutch. I love that. So let me put some of this stuff out of the way. And then here is my outer bag and my lining. So here's my outer bag that I've already trimmed all the way around, correct? And I've sewn the bottom seam closed, completely closed, right sides together, sew that closed. And then do the same for your lining, but this time follow the notches that are part of the embroidery design and leave the space open between the two notches on the lining so that you have this opening for turning. Because when it comes time to birth the bag, as we say, um, you want to have that all together. So I have another piece here that everything is already sewn together. And I have my lining right side out. I have my bag wrong side out. And of course, you'll notice that the, the corners are boxed, right? Well, that's what that little cutout was in the embroidery design. So when we sew that side seam together, you would do that first. I'll just clip that so you can get a little idea on how that goes. And then we take our side seam and match it to the bottom. And when you do that, you sew right across that edge on that line and you have a perfect boxed bottom. Oh, I love that. It's like one of my favorite things to do in sewing is to box the bottom of a bag. It gives you such a finishing professional touch. Okay, so I'm gonna put that lining into the outer bag, matching centers and edges. And I would just clip that all the way around. And then I'm going to sew 
from this point all the way around, all the way to here. And then I stop stitching, back tack here a little bit, and then I flip it over and do the same on this side. And I stitch right in that stitch line so that that's not visible after it's already sewn together. And once that's done, then we pull it right side out through the lining. And here we have that here. So I have already turned mine, as you can see. So, and I've already sewn my bottom closed on this sample. So this is what it looks like. And I spend some time pressing that so that it looks really nice and, and finished because once you get that hardware on, it's a little bit more difficult to um, press. The last thing you're going to do is top stitch this whole upper edge. I did it here in contrasting thread in a white, but at home you could probably do it in the gray, although I tell you it will not be visible. But that's the key to getting that edge into the little tiny channel of the frame. So I'm going to push this one back and clip it out of the way so that I only work on one side at a time. And we have to, uh, you know, you have to pay attention to which way it folds, right? So that you put it in the proper way. And with the bag positioned like this, as you can see, I want to put this edge into this part of the frame. So I take a glue, uh, Aileen's Fashion Fusion is fine. Uh, Beacon makes a, a glue that works. Guterman makes one. So I hold it up and then I just squeeze a bead and I run that bead all the way around and I'm not, I'm, it's not really coming out here, but that's okay. And so I run that all the way around and then follow the directions. The manufacturer may say, let it rest for like five minutes or 10, whatever it says. And then this is a little clunky as I'd say, but that's okay. Then we just work on getting this into that frame. And one side at a time, one edge at a time, and you may be wondering why I have this ruler here. Well, I'll tell you, it is the perfect size ruler to help push that into the frame. And of course, when the glue is in there, it does begin to grab it and that really does help. So get that stuck in there. And now the glue would be working. And if you are having trouble, then you would just take this ruler and help push that all the way in. So it, it's not gluing because I, the glue didn't come out. And then I let it rest. I just leave it alone and let it rest for like an hour. And then I undo it, undo this part and work on the other half. So that's how easy it is to make that clutch. I think that uh, it's so rewarding to do that because it's super fun. And then when you're done, you have this great clutch. And I have made so many of these um, through the years in all different styles. So let's see, we have a lot of, a lot of questions here. Judy Warren, is the, ru is the ruler on sale? <laughs> no, the ruler is not on sale. S secret, um, I'll tell you a secret, Judy, your credit card would work too. Not just to sell, but also to use to push in that ruler. Let's see, can you use the automatic threader with the heavier thread? Actually, yes, you can, because it's a heavy thread and uh, because it's a top stitch needle, you know, it's a wider target for that needle threader to push that heavier thread through. So I haven't had any trouble. Um, Alice wants to, to know, can it be done on a Bernina 7070? Uh, yes, uh, it can. You will have to follow Bernina's guidelines for working with heavier threads. Uh, um, but we have most certainly had many people um, make those dis those clutches on that. Let's see. And how much thread is in this kit that comes with the collection? There's 12 spools in there. And it's a sampling of the thread, enough to do the 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 clutches that are in the uh, less in the collection itself. But uh, you most certainly can buy these. Uh, and Holly, the the hardware does not the hardware does not come in the bag but uh, does not come in the kit, but it is sold separately and it's very reasonable. And usually I think when you check out, it says you wanna add this. And Deborah, let's see, you said, Deborah Morgan, these are fun bags. You've used our previous program. We were uh, promoting uh, Be the Difference, a, a charitable organization for ovarian cancer. And um, 
let's see. Yeah, yeah, we did a lot of work with them for sure. And Bonnie, you went to Sue's site and it does not come up when you post the site to order it. Well, maybe you should send an, uh, an email to uh, them. I, I don't really have that information. So uh, let's see, the Vintage Clutch Bundle, there's some info from that. And uh, Rita, you think they're so pretty? Aren't they fun? I know, I love how they're so fast. And they just, um, they're just so fast. Let's see. And is the, uh, Judy is the ruler on sales. She's funny. Uh, you know, through three ladies who went to Mexico together and each made that clutch for the trip. Oh, that's adorable, Deborah. I love that. What kind of fabric do you use uh, with this thread? Really, I've used a canvas. I've used cotton quilting fabric. Um, I have recently experimented with a faux vinyl, and although it worked, I personally don't like the large holes from the top stitch needle that you have to use, you know, it, so on vinyl, you know, any needle penetration is permanent. The vinyl doesn't really close back up. It's kind of like leather. So I, um, I don't, uh, recommend using that on the faux vinyl. So let's see. And Judy, you like that floral cuts? Yeah, me too. And I love the matte finish of, of the thread also, Pat. You know, interestingly enough, a very long time ago, I had the pleasure of meeting Martha Stewart and I made her a set of personalized stationery with her embroidered monogram on it and as a gift. And I used a rayon shiny fabric, I, I mean, not fabric, thread at the time. And she touched it and she just kind of said that she preferred a matte finish. And we didn't really have at back then a matte polyester thread that anybody was successful with, you know, with stitching out. So I, it was a good thought that I kept in the back of my mind that maybe many people would uh, like to have a heavier thread. So that is matte finish for sure. So I, it's just, uh, oh, Donna, you've already made it. And you said uh, on linen and it looked great. Oh, it would be beautiful on linen for sure. That That's a great fabric to have it um, married with for definitely. But, you know, they're fun and they're fast. And that I, that's what I like about it. It's big impact for a small amount of work. So you're going to, um, you're going to, um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. You're gonna slow down your machine. You're gonna make sure to use a top stitch needle and the weight of the thread is 15 weight. That's the heavy chunky one. And then we also have a 40 weight thread that, and they're all in the, in the same colorways. Uh, in the kit that you get with the collection, it has, turn this right side up, it has 12 different spools and they're a mix of the 40 and a mix of the 15. Um, we also do have three separate boxes, you know, six actually that we sell on the website. We have a pastel, an earth tone and a bright collection. So that would be 12 brights of 15, 12 brights of 40 weight and so forth. But, so if you're liking this look, there are other options, but this is just a good starter kit. And goodness today, it's, um, it's really a, a great price. So, um, you know, $39.99, it's normally $59.99 and you get the pack of top stitch needles. So um, it's, uh, you know, really a bonus buy today and, and I free shipping. We got to love that. We got to love that. Oh, and someone say uh, some of the comments about Martha, I shouldn't have uh, brought that up, but I, I didn't mean it that she was rude, but I just meant that it was interesting that that was her take on embroidery at that time. You know, she wasn't really very interested in the shiny that we all love. So, yes. Uh, and let's see. Um, can you switch your needle for the 40 weight? Well, you could, but you're not going to get that same nice look that you get with the 15 weight. Now, these designs have been digitized specifically for that thread. So I'm going to show you that color sequence so you can get a better look at that. Let me switch cameras and bring this up nice and close so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Pardon the mess here for a minute while I add this to the screen. Um, 
but right here in the color sequence, it says 40 weight, 40, 40, 15, 15, 40. So you do have to follow that um, color sequence that you have the right weight of thread to mimic the look of the design. You can most certainly use the <laughs> you can most certainly use the 40 weight in lieu of the 15 weight, but you cannot put the 15 weight in the 40 weight slot. Your stitches will lay on top of each other and get too bunched up. So just follow the directions. And you know, I use baby lock machines and brother machines. And on, when I load that design into the machine, it that little verbiage that tells you what color to your next, what thread your next color is stitching in. Uh, on my machines, it comes up dime, dime 15, dime 40. So it's right at my machine. I can't verify that it's like that on all brands, but it's really very helpful. Yeah, let's see. Can you use these, can do you use a regular bobbin? I do, I use a regular embroidery bobbin. That's what I use. Can you use it on cork? Um, I have not experimented it with cork. Uh, maybe you could, maybe you could. Uh, is there a video on how to make these purses? Um, not currently at this time, but um, there are very good step-by-step -step instructions. There's eight pages that come with it. And it actually, you know, shows you illustrated how to do it step by step. So it's it's pretty thorough for sure. And I did just kind of show some of the steps. So if you watch late, uh, go back to see the, the earlier broadcast, you would be able to get that uh, information. So let's, um, yeah, so that's about it. You know, next week is so exciting. I can't wait. Well, first off, we have Memorial Day weekend, right? Which is, um, a big relaxing time for many families. It'll be a little different this year, but um, it, we all need a break, I think. I know I do. People say, you know, are you working? Well, frankly, Sue Overy and I were talking, you know, we're working harder these past couple months than probably I've ever worked in my life, but I'm grateful to be doing that for sure. So um, I'm looking forward to a nice three day long weekend. But next week, Deborah Jones is my guest, and we're talking all about stabilizers. You know, she is the embroidery expert, most certainly brings so much experience and knowledge to that topic, to our company. So I'm very excited to have her here. And we get to do a little drum roll next week when we do the dime door. So that'll be super fun, right? We'll do that on Thursday. And I've been working on it. I actually have uh, June's done, July and August, which is really great. Lots of summer theme going on. Retha, I just want to hit your, um, your question before I... Do we use the same thread in the bobbin? I use standard embroidery thread in the bobbin. And Claudetta, uh, I do use that top stitch needle for the whole project. So even that 40 weight thread, I use the top stitch needle. That's fine, no problem with that. So um, thank you so much for joining me today. It was great to be here. Great to have Sue Overy here and I'm looking forward to next week. So till then, happy sewing and we'll see you next week.